Not every nation can boast that its culture has a thousand-year history, dating back to the pre-Christian times. Ukrainians can. Ivan Kupal, Milanka, Verta. These traditions form a unique cultural code that, among other things, defines us as a nation. Our ancestors often managed to preserve these ancient customs to this day at the cost of their own lives, despite the fact that they were being erased. Today we will activate the genetic code and see how people still observe ancient rituals even in times of war. World Inside Out with Dmitro Komarov, Ukraine. At the beginning of 2023, I went on a large-scale expedition to explore the miraculously kept traditions of winter celebrations by our ancestors. We are now in the Chernovsky region, and this is Voshkevci, who wasn't been here before. There was the Moldovan Republic, then Austria-Hungary, then Romania, then the Soviet Union, then Romania again for a short time, then the Soviet Union again, and finally independent Ukraine. Due to the constant changes, a real cocktail of traditions has been formed here and it's so diverse that it's hard to imagine. But today you will see it's something that we can safely say. The carnival in Rio de Janeiro is no match. Today is January 13th, 2023. Look around, there are very few people. Usually on this day, there are already thousands of tourists who have come to one of the largest ethnic festivals in Europe. But this year, the war changed everything. Many people say that today, during the war, any celebrations are out of place. I wonder what will happen in Veshkevci this year, if anything at all. Melanka is the main event of the year here, but it will be celebrated for the first time during a full-scale invasion. Will the lack of tourists hinder the celebration? We'll find out right now. We're going to talk to a man who has never missed a single Milanka in his entire life. Hello? Hello. I'm Dmitro Vassil. Lida. Nice to meet you. Please come in. Why do you have all this stuff laid out on the coach so nicely? What are you planning now? We are preparing collado. The guys are coming, so we have to get dressed. So you're meeting guests? Yes. I have been dressing up since I was six years old, and I have such a love for this Milanka. Pereberia, our dressing up, is a part of the Milanka celebration in Veshkevci. It has been especially loved since the 19th century, when the owner of the village introduced a competition for the best costume. Why did Mr. Tarantel establish it? Because life was very hard, and uh, he said in order to cheer people up a little bit, he even gave a barrel of beer to those people and held a competition for whoever would show the best performance and dress up. And that's uh, where the Perberia comes from. Veshkevci has six corners, as the locals call the town's districts, because they are small, like nooks and crannies. And on Milanka, the corners compete in Pekin, just like in the old days, although they no longer receive beer and honey for it. I've never missed a single periberia in my entire life. We had such a conflict when we got married. My wife said, no, it's not going to happen. You will not go to periberia. I said, yes, I will go to periberia. I have been dressing up. I'm dressing up and I will continue to dress up. Finally, she said that we would get a divorce. I said, well, I'm not going to give up on that. When we got married, it was our first Malanka and we were supposed to have guests. My family was there. I asked him to come later. He said, no, I had to go, I had to dress up. We had a scandal. I was left alone with my relatives and he got up and left. So, if it's your wife on Periberia, you choose either way. Periberia. But today, someone says, there's a war going on, you shouldn't do Milanka, it's not the right time. But he, what do you think, it's time or not? I think that it is. It's a tradition. How can you leave it behind? I also have friends on the front line and they say, why not go? Why not take a break? And why not? I'm fighting for you to be back here.
The tradition of celebrating Milanka is so old that the meaning and symbols of the holiday have changed many times. In pagan times, the key character of Perebri was a beautiful young woman named Milanka, who replaced an old woman on New Year's Eve. With the advent of Christianity, they began to celebrate the day of Saint Melania, who was a nun in her lifetime and helped the needy. However, despite the strict religious meaning, people kept the tradition of festivities and dressing up. Nowadays, there are even more characters in Perubiria. Tell us about the characters. Who are they? The main characters are old men and old women. And which one is which? This is old man, this is a suit, a cloak, a mask. This is the old woman costume, mask and head scarf. The old woman is a little scary. Its one is not so scary, but this one is even scarier. This woman is really scary. If you meet a woman like that, you won't fall asleep like this. This is a cool woman. <laughs> this is a gypsy costume. And this is a gypsy woman. So we learn. There is an old man, an old woman, a gypsy and gypsy woman. Who else? The groom and the bride. This was a coronavirus when it was around. So you see current events. Yes, this is a gentleman, maybe a doctor. A doctor, yeah. Dr. Komarov. Ski. <laughs> Some of the masks are 100 years old and have been passed down from generation to generation. These days, traditional characters are being modernized. The Tsar, for example, is replaced by a Cossack and the devil by a Soviet policeman. New images appear every year from politicians to favorite movie characters. By the way, as far as I know, the peculiarity of Milanka is that only man can dress up, that is, costume up. Yes, it used to be that it was only men, boys. And now we have such modern women that they also dress up and you don't recognize them anymore. Is this handmade? Yes. I can see the fabric here. Pay VA glue fabric and varnish, and it's painted. Mr. Vassil and his wife not only dress up for Milanka, but also make these amazing masks themselves. Basically, it starts with a game. They take clay and knit it like dough, and then a mold is made. Something like this. In order not to drag these around, I altered them and made these. This is how I lightened my masks and molds. Vassil is self-taught. He started making masks when he was a child, but then he couldn't pay them. Fifteen years ago, the man took up mask making again and entrusted the coloring to his wife. Since then, the family business has taken off. We worked nights and days, 250 to 300 per season. Our masks are sold abroad. They even bought them in Rio de Janeiro in Canada. Now we are going to make a mask. We cut the plaster into pieces. Yes, it's a common medical plaster that hospitals use for injuries. We put on a bag because the plaster will stick. We dip a piece of plaster bandage in it and apply three layers of plaster. We get a mask like this and then we put it to dry. When the plaster hardens, the mask is covered with a cloth. The eyes, mouth and nose are cut out with a sharp knife, and then Mrs. Lydia, Vassil's wife, takes over. I always start with the lips. When my husband started making masks, he didn't know how to draw. I don't know how to draw either, but I had to. He said, just keep drawing. So I tried and it worked. The scarier it is, the faster it sells. I used to paint with enamels. It was very difficult to paint with enamels because enamel paint has specific smells, we were constantly being poisoned by it. And then tourists came to us and they suggested choosing this acrylic paint. Now this mask has to dry and it needs to be varnished. This mask is ready, it's already dried. You can see the difference. The paint comes to life under the varnish. 
this year. Because of the war, there are no tourists, so the couple hasn't sold a single mask. How much does one mask cost? 400 grimnias, 400. I'll take them all. Not a question. I'm going to open a museum later and get rich on it. It's just a joke. Come and be sure to buy these masks. This is the kind of advertising in the world inside out. Three guys have already come to Vasil and Lydia's house to dress up to the wartime Milanka. Let's get acquainted. Yaroslav, what's your name? Mikhailo, Mikhailo, Sergei. What have you brought? These are traditional costumes. A bear and a gypsy. Why gypsies? Because they used to bring bears. Gypsies used to bring bears. That's the connection. Yes, that's it. Here is a gypsy training a bear. Yeah. The gypsies now with the logo of the armed forces of Ukraine. Yeah, it's cool. This is a tassel. It's like a skirt. It's seen with a charikana. How old are you? 19. You're a modern person already, as they say, of the Instagram generation, right? Yes. What is more interesting and closer to you? The life on Instagram or the life here in Bashkevci? Bashkevci. This is the basis of the holiday. These sounds are already creating the atmosphere in the town. And you promised to dress me up? What am I going to be? Please. A bear. Since pre-Christian times, the bear in this part has symbolized the strength and protection of the native land. It visually defends its possessions and never attacks others. So we need to start with the pants. Something like that. You see? Something like that. Okay. Now they dress up in the evening and tomorrow they will undress for the evening. It's very hard. Do you have to wear this for a day? Yeah. Yaroslav is a gypsy. I'm a bear. You walk me down the street. Yes. And you just need this belt. This belt is like something from the Middle Ages. It's what the gypsy will use to lead you. I mean, I'm done, I'm on a chain. The bear costume weighs 20 kilograms at least. In addition, it's tightly dragged with a pair of Vesla, a rope made of sedge, which has to hold the costume firmly and not to be too tight. Don't break my ribs! This is how one of the main images of the legendary Milanko, which has been celebrated on this land for hundreds and hundreds of years, is born little by little. I don't understand. You are walking around like this, Master. Why aren't you dressed? Just a moment. The owner dressed as a baron, a gypsy. There will be a gypsy. Usually, there are many more men and boys who dress up in Bashkevci, but now at least 300 have gone to war. My father is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss. Did you manage to bring his body back? Yes. Did you bury him here in Bashkevci, in our hometown? Did you have any anxiety, any premonition? Yes. Every day, every day, yeah. Every defender of Ukraine is a hero, yes. When was the last time you talked to him? In the summer. Do you remember the last conversation? Yes, he came home from the territorial defense and told us that he was going to war. I was immediately afraid, worried, scared. He reassured me. Please forgive me, your father is a hero. It's okay, we honor him, I know that. How do you find the strength to be here with us, despite such a tragedy in your family? My father supported it, he loved it, and I will support and love it. 
That's what he wouldn't have wanted. He would have wanted to maintain traditions. Did your father dress up to Milanka every year? Every year. And so am I. May your father's memory be eternal. Shall we? Thank you for inviting me to your celebration. What should I do now? Hi. Sing carols. On this night, Milanka people go from house to house singing traditional songs. It's believed that they bring happiness and fun to the house from the whole year. Hear them, Milanka. It's like carols, people sing them too, but you're in Milanka. It's about the same, or the same principle, as Christmas. For good luck for your health, thank you. It's a real vibe, a real vibe on Milanko. Only in Bashkivtsi can you hear that. And this sound of a whip is a signal that competitors are approaching. Men from another corner. This means that a real Bashkevsi Borinka is about to take place here. So we are bears from your neighborhood and there are bears from another one. Yes, and we are fighting with. And who wins is proud of it all year round. The best bears of Bashkevsi in 23rd year. Yes. The bear and the gypsy are the main characters of the Borinka. It symbolizes the eternal struggle between God and evil. It's believed that the accustomed people don't allow the internal forces to come out and overcome them. Here are our competitors coming right at us. I didn't have time to find out who became the best Bashkevsi bear this year because someone gave me a good punch. I got punched in the nose so hard, it's crazy, I'm crying. Man, you see, they hit me so hard that it was just, it was a real battle. My head was spinning. That's how it is, a real Milanka from Bashkevsi. It's very loud, very noisy, expressive, and most importantly, real. After the Borenka, we can see which characters came from other corners. The locals believe that if you carefully hide your face, it will protect you from evil spirits from a whole year. Can I see what you look like, Mr. Oldman? Can I? Or not? You're not an old man. You're a woman. A woman. There were no women before. Hello, Oldman. Hello. Your clothes are very nice. That's a very old coat you have, isn't it? How old is it? About 80, maybe 100 years. 80 to 100 years old. And those seat, is it? Good evening. Good evening. This is a Hutzel version because it's with Sardal. I'm so well versed with these Milanka traditions. I've been in Milanka since 1978. And how old are you? I'm 50 years old. Please tell me, this year is a special Milanka. There are no tourists, no festival, but there are traditions that are hundreds of years old. Your opinion? As an honorary Malanka participant who has been celebrating since the 70s. Now, first and foremost, we have to take care, like our entire state, we have to take care of victory. 
But despite this, I had a phone conversation with one of my friends who is fighting in Solidar today, and he asked me to do something. Vitaly, I sincerely ask you to film this dressing up, Carolyn, and singing because it will raise our moral. It will be very nice because we are far from our homes today. We are supporting our defenders by doing this, especially since they are looking forward to it. Even the man who still has a job to do today dressed up for Milanka. We are going to work. I work as an assistant driver. So you work for Ukrozelaznitsi, I'm right? I have to be at work at 9 p.m. So in two hours you have to be at work, and you're already in your way somewhere, you don't know where. Right. When we get there. What are the options? They can send us to Lviv. Lviv. They can send us to Moldova. Moldova. Romania. This is an indicator of how much people love and respect Milanka. The man is probably going to Moldova, probably to Lviv in two hours, but he's wearing a mask here. Under Soviet rule, Milanka in Bashkivtsi was threatened and banned. But despite the fact that for 70 years the Peribarians were persecuted, arrested and fired from their jobs, the residents of Bashkivtsi still secretly continued to dress up for Milanka, and at great risk they kept this tradition alive. The Soviet police they were cracking down on it because they didn't want any folk traditions. They wanted everything to be communist. Today it has changed so much that it has integrated into the way it's in Europe. It probably already looks like a carnival in our country. How is this year different from all the others? Today Milanka is returning to its original state which it was during the First and Second World Wars. There were no such festivities because it was turning into a carnival. Traditions should not die. And if these traditions disappear due to political or military events, we will disappear as a nation. We will lose our past. And if we forget our past, there will be no future. There's a golden words, and this is nothing to add. People confirm that a tradition of Milanka was preserved here even during the First and Second World Wars. I'm sure that there are few places in the world where you cannot just watch, but you can come up and participate. It's such a contact type of observing holidays, carnivals. Look at what's happening right now. It's a boring car right in front of us, and this is not for tourists. There are no tourists today. These guys are just having fun. It's just a real tradition. These guys are having fun. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. The owner of the house must invite the Malanka players inside and treat them to some goodies and, of course, vodka. Bashkevsi residents are sure that if such a company comes to the house, the evil spirits will not get in. Let's see what's on the table. We see Aspic. Porcini mushrooms, wish, sweets, sausages. It's a very rich table, very cool. Viva Vasil! Viva! This is how Milanka begins. This is just the beginning. Then the Milanka people go around to all their neighbors and friends to praise their hosts with songs and wish them health and prosperity. But this year the war added new neighbors to Bashkirti who had never seen a traditional Milanka before in their lives. Now we have come to a house where refugees from eastern Ukraine who came here during the war live. Many of them have nowhere else to live, so Bashkirti has become the town that saved them. And we are coming to them now. This is a surprise. Let's go. Let's go. And wrestle. Bravo! And wrestle. Bravo! Happy holidays! Happy holidays! Thank you! Do you like it? Yes, good. Thank you for coming. We're from the Luhansk region. Where are you from? From Luhansk. Which city? Luhansk? Lysychansk. Lysychansk. Thank you for coming. 
We are crying, we want to go home. But we were met very well here, very well. How do you like it here? Very nice. We thank God. Even in a year like this, the Veshkevtsi try to keep the tradition alive and cheer up a little bit and show that it's important to live during the war as well. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Ukraine. Comes first. At the time of filming, in January of 23, about 40 refugees from the east and south of Ukraine lived in Vashkevtsi dormitory of the medical college, and each of them had their own tragic story. When did you leave Lysychansk? On March 30th. My house was also hit, a shell hit my entrance. The two-room apartments were all destroyed, but the three-room apartment remained. My neighbor is living in my apartment now. She asked me to let her stay. I said, I'm very very glad that you are living. My daughter left, my granddaughter went to the funeral, my son-in-law died on February 16th and she stayed there. And I am alone. Irina from Mykolaiv. Today is exactly 10 months since we have been here. My son-in-law is at war and I know how hard it is there. We left Donetsk back in 14 and we left Kharkiv in March. What is your name, please? Snyzhana. I lived in Elushta, Crimea, until the 14th year, and then in Irpin, near Kiev. In March, I had to leave Irpin and come here. Where is Elena from? I was born in Kramatorsk, and now I came from Kharkiv. This is my second war. And the first one? I studied and worked in Donetsk, and I had to leave Donetsk for Kharkiv. I was saving myself. I was saved in Kharkiv, and now I had to leave Kharkiv and come here. A shell hit my house from an airplane at the very beginning of the war on March 1st. Friends of friends said, here is a place. We left Lviv first by an evacuation train to Lviv, and then here. We didn't even know where we were going. They said a village, and I thought, oh my god, it doesn't matter where. We arrived, and everything turned out to be so great. It's a dormitory, and what kind of people are here? And everyone says, hello, you know, we were shocked to, to walk down the street and hear, good day, good day, good day. At first I thought, how do they know me? But it turns out that everyone here lives like this. While we were talking to the refugees, another group of Vashkev Simulonka players from the other side of the village came to the site. We also make Malanka, but maybe a little differently. Malanka came and asked Vasilka, Vasilka, father, let me in the house. I did not reap the rye. I held the holy cross. Get ready, people. Christ will be with you. We hear you. Happy New Year. Thank you. You know, someone says that there is an east-west divide. Look, here the east and the west are together. Let's hug each other. Yes, let's hug. Hugs to you all. Today we've been walking around Washkevsi for a long time and wherever we go, everyone wishes us peace, all good and victory. And we believe it will happen. Where do you get your energy from? You have seen a lot, you have seen doing this for many years. You can just look at it as an experienced person and, guys, I've already done it, I just want to enjoy it. And you are walking around all night. I think there is nothing more important than a personal example. If we don't dress up and show up, where they're going to learn this. These guys are great, but I'm very proud in Bashkivtsi terms that we're passing on our traditions, our best skills to these people. I translate for the audience. I'm proud, prideful, it's cool. The festivities are in full swing, so we go on to Malanka in the village. This is how we go to Carolyn in the village, the night of January 13, year 23. 
in the evening, people sing, dance, and always drive a goat on the streets of Veshkepsi, as it symbolized harvest and prosperity. It's believed that on this day, the cattle are endowed with speech and can even complain to God about a negligent owner. Milanka is also in time to be noted. Veshkepsi residents harass passerby and make a real fuss in the village. Here they say that today you have to be very naughty, so that's it will be the biggest damage for the coming year. In the morning, the celebration continues. Carnival participants and curious spectators gather by the river for a new fantastic performance. The second day, January 14th. Good afternoon. Can I take a picture with you? Hi, sure. Is it Kupin today? Yes. Kupinka is a pagan analogue of epiphany. It symbolizes purification from all the bad things that happened during the year. Well, what can I say? It's pretty warm today, but it's quite cold. And I'll be honest, I'm wearing a down jacket, but I'm a little chilly. You can see Alexander is also wearing a hat. It's okay, everyone is dressed so warmly. This is our team. And the guys are swimming. That's so it don't get wet. It's starting to get hot. It's starting to get hot. Let's go and see. Hi. You punk! I'll get you! You see, he pulled me into the water. It's really cold. The water is cold. You better tell me before I freeze to death here. Why are you swimming? What are you doing? If you bath, all your sins are gone. All sins and evil spirits, yes. So now you're cleansing Ukraine of evil spirits, yes. And who are you? And you're a policeman, yes. Come here. What do we have here? What do we have here, stars? This is from the Soviet Union. You've got a hammer and sickle. You need to be the decommunized, my friend. Come on, get it in the water and cleanse yourself. Tell me, does anyone catch a cold after that? Never. Never? Never. Never. Everyone is healthy and strong. Tell me, oh, should I drink it like this to keep warm, right? You see, you go into the water, take out the lemonade, nothing else. Yes, homemade lemonade. Just homemade lemonade. Here we can say this. Oh, the one who has drunk the most is the one who swims the most. Having warmed up well, the Malanka dancers take on the spectators who have gathered by the river. Now the pranks begin. Let's go and do some pranks. They catch people and drag them into the water. Come on! Girls, congrats! You're the bravest. That's it, you're clean, such brave girls. The locals are convinced that the water on this day washes away all evil spirits. This is how Malonka is celebrated in Vashkivtsi. And today it's not for tourists. They keep the traditions alive despite the fact that there is a war going on. And now let's move from the scenic Bukovina to the front line Slobodanchina to Kharkiv. It's generally on the 23rd year and the mood here is completely different. There are almost no residents in Saltimka. Many houses are without electricity. But people also do not forget about ancient rituals, in particular Christmas. It's very cold. It's generally on the year 23, 13 degrees below zero. This is Saltivka, once the largest residential area in Ukraine. Now I have a very strange feeling. North in Saltivka resembles a ghost neighborhood. Several hundred houses have been destroyed and dozens are beyond repair. You can see an impact right next to us, everything burned down. Everyone 
Everyone finds their own individual solution. These residents just covered their apartments with plastic wrap, and these apartments are still empty. The guys are already installing windows. It would seem that the houses are destroyed, but here is a construction crane, and this house was lucky. It's in the first line for restoration. You see, they are just completing it. What was demolished by the Russian artillery is being rebuilt. Soon it will be as good as new. Saltivka looks like a heavily wounded person. Its wounds are slowly but steadily healing, although the scars will remain for a long time. For this purpose, every day Kharkiv citizens perform small and big miracles. Today is the day before Christmas and real miracles are happening. The nativity play in northern Saltivka. Among the destroyed houses is a real traditional Ukrainian. Christ is born. Glorify him. I'm very glad to see you here in Saltivka. And you too. There is no need to introduce Reverend Oleg. Let me hug you. Christ is born. Glorify him. If you remember, Reverend Oleg and I celebrated Easter in April during the most difficult period when Saltivka was bombed and under Stalin, Reverend Oleg went to the basements and greeted people. Can I walk with you for a while and observe? Of course, let's go. It's an impressive picture to see a festive procession in a broken, deserted neighborhood. Among the ruins of impacts and burnt-out entrances, carolers in traditional costumes look like a real miracle. It's hard to believe that a holiday has come to this long-suffering neighborhood. Did you have a carol in today? No. Can we come to sing carols with you? Yes, please. This tent made of carpets was the only shelter for those whose homes had been destroyed. They cooked and kept warm here because in January of 23 there were still power and heating cots in Saltivka. What's your name, please? Marina. I'm the eldest. Marina, is this a summer kitchen? Yes, this is the summer kitchen, the winter kitchen. We eat here, we have tea here when the power goes out. First of all, Christ was born. My congratulations. Yes. Glorify him. I was in our church today. Merry Christmas. Thank you. And happy Christmas to you. May God help you. And he's helping here. They sound so beautifully that I couldn't resist. You are making holiday for people at such a hard time. How did you come up with this idea? It's Christmas Day. We want to greet people in this neighborhood which has suffered the most, especially in a neighborhood like this. We want them to be happy even a little bit today. We want to bring joy to people. Even in such neighborhoods, there are still one or two families. Some kindness, warmth, we can present to them, so that they would be happy, so they know that no one forgets about them. Merry Christmas! God bless you!
Christ is born, Merry Christmas, glorify him, God bless you. You know, I really want these images to be seen, including by Russians who watch zombie TV and believe that they had military facilities, military and energy infrastructure. Here, Saltivka is just a proof that is war crimes against ordinary people. They liberate us from housing in the first place. Many people have been freed from life too. God forbid to live through such a time and never imagined that I would live to see such a time. I've lived for 50 years and I've only seen the war in pictures and movies, but that I would see it in real life, never in my life. I wouldn't believe anyone if they told me that it could happen. When did you live here? On April 11th, we left Kharkiv to Sumy. We were here in April too, it was hell there. Now it looks like hell, but there is still a life. It is, of course, horrible, that's all. But it is a blessing to be home. We turned a month ago with the kids, we were in Sumy. It's nice there, but it's better at home. Because at home, the walls are dear, the children are happy, we are happy, and we help as much as we can. Christ was born, happy holidays, glorify him. Thank you very much, Merry Christmas. How many people live in north south of Kai at the time of this shooting? It's impossible to answer, but the words very few will be true. Most of them are elderly people. It's hardest for them now, and it's for their sake that Reverend Oleg started this whole action. Reverend Oleg, with some volunteers, organized a small Christmas treat for the elderly women of Saltivka. Delicious, right? For our residents of Saltivka. Come, 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 have a taste, please. A small but festive table. Please share the meal. Are you from Saltivka? Yes. Everyone here is from Saltivka. Some of us studied in this school, which is destroyed behind this house. We are all from this school, we studied here. In general, how does Saltika celebrate Christmas this year? In different ways. Someone is at home, someone doesn't have a home. But we celebrate. Are you a Saltika resident? Of course we are. Our house was hit. I want to compliment you, because you're wearing makeup, you look so beautiful, so festive. We don't give up. It's great. Destroyed houses, but such beautiful women, such beautiful people, it's great. We're waiting and hoping for the end of all this. We are so tired of everything, but we believe, we believe in victory. We hope that the Lord will hear us and bring us victory and peace. That everyone will live in harmony and peace and did not know these sorrows. No matter how hard it is, no matter how scary it is, we are strong, we are firm and we are on our own land. The main thing is to have peace and victory. In fact, I want to say that I'm sure that despite all the horror that we'll see today, in almost every home there will be a family that will gather, there will be 12 dishes and there will be Christmas. There will be Christmas, there will be joy. So help us God. We already know that during the 23rd year, many residents returned to Saltivka, but at the time of filming, the area was almost empty. The area that seemed dead during the day comes to life at night. You know, friends, it's very impressive. The windows are glowing. Yes, there are very few of them, but they are there, so there is life inside. We're going to visit a family that was not afraid to come back here to Saltivka, and today they will traditionally celebrate Christmas. We, of course, didn't come on a whim. We asked the police in which apartment the family lies, where there are people, and now we came on a tip. The house is warm. A broken neighborhood, but the houses have electricity and heating. Great. It's great. 56. This must be 57. Hello, may we come in? Of course you can. Christ is born. Glorify him. Come in, we're waiting for you. Everyone's at the table, I see. Yes. Hello. Hello. You're all so serious. Are you shy? Here are small souvenirs. Here we go. 
as it's customary of Christmas Eve, Alexander and Natalia gathered at a table with the whole family, parents, children, relatives and close friends. In general, how many families live here in this part of Saltica who today celebrate Christmas like this? Very few. Complete us here may be families five, that's the maximum. And so in our yard there are five windows shining, their father two windows are shining and their father away is all dark there. All your neighboring houses are bombed out. Was your house hit too? Yes, every house here was hit. There is not a single whole house in the neighborhood. We gathered around the table tonight because it's a special night. Let's just get on with the meal because the kids are hungry. Thank you very much. On the holiday table, traditionally 12 lean dishes. And we'll start in the evening with a rich cootier. I would like to thank you all for coming here today, for giving us the opportunity to gather today. May we continue to do so for many, many years to come. Happy holidays. And so it's been a happy year for all of us. When did you come back? Because, you know, it's all destroyed here. It's not like it was. Vlad? Will you tell the man what happened, why we left in the first place? Because the war started at night. We started packing. Then we went to look for a new home. And then we came back. My husband was totally against me coming back with a child, but we all came back together. But I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. Because the perception of life... I feel calmer here than I did in Lviv. We came here, even the alarms feel differently. I'm not so scared. I don't know, maybe it's stupid, of course, but... And that it's 30 kilometers to the border doesn't bother you either? No. When we were away from home, life was at a pause, like for me. Now it started to move on. What are you missing right now to make Christmas perfect? Peace. I need the war to end eventually. For our people to win. For our people to win? Yes, and the Russians lose. Russia's pissing everybody off. I want to play a little on the playground, just a little. What's scary, Victoria? How they are destroying the city. They are destroying our city. Ours. And if you could, as a wizard, change everything, what would you do? Just make it so that there'd never be another war. I think Victoria said it better than all the adults. I asked her what it would take to make Christmas happy, and Victoria simply said short and clear that the war would end. What can I say, my friends? It doesn't matter what your neighborhood looks like, what's on the table. If you can gather at home like this during the war, it's a Christmas miracle and a Christmas joy. Christ is born. Glorify him. I spent this Christmas Eve in Saltivka, which was completely destroyed by the enemy, and I saw that people here also cherish traditions, family values and our thousand-year heritage. Some may say that now it's not the time for celebrations, however, it's worth remembering that the enemy is trying to erase not only our homes, but also our culture and traditions. That's why, as long as we preserve the history of our ancestors, this memory lives on in us and it's indestructible. In the next episode of the World Inside Out Ukraine, we have arrived at a special place. Hello, everyone! The World Inside Out expedition through Ukraine, which impresses and surprises, continues. We have an incredibly diverse country. One of the world's coolest inventions is one that Ukrainians invented and made themselves. It repeats the movement. When will robots replace people? How many robots do you have? About 50. And how many people? More than 150. Machines have not yet won, as they said in the Terminator. Not yet. And what will we do while they are working? Let's see who is faster, a human or a robot like this. 
amazing places of Ukraine that you have never seen before. This is a house very small, a classic slum. It's similar to what we have seen in India. May I see your jewelry? Sorry, I'm very interested in all the details. They say that gypsies love gold. One, two, three, four. And the peoples with thousands of years of tradition live next to us. Thirteen children. Excuse me, I can't help but ask how many wives. Two. Impressive restoration of complete ruin, which was hard to even imagine. There were piles of stones here, everything was broken, and it was painful to look at. Epic chronicles all the war through the eyes of Ukrainian children. They have photos of their dead parents on their desks. He had nightmares for a very long time. Mom was coming with dead. I realized that they had already died. Stories that cannot be heard without tears. You have to appreciate your loved ones while you have them. Amazing and strong, real Ukraine in the project, the world inside out on TV channel One Plus One Ukraine. Do not miss it. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. The world inside out with Mitro Komarov, Ukraine.